Hey traders, Ragi here. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through the main themes that I'm going to be carrying into Monday. So what are the leaders and laggards? What are the one month relative performance leaders and laggards? And how are we gonna use this knowledge to build a watch list and to be able to set up some trades going into, into Monday? All right, so let's get to it. A few things to think about. One is when I'm thinking about relative performance as it pertains to the daily time frame, I am definitely going to be focused on one month. If I'm looking at a daily time frame and I am looking at the trends that I'd like to capitalize on that longer term time frame, it's got to be a one month relative performance. And some of the one month relative performance leaders that are out there right now would be things like wheat would be things like oats in fact they're the number one and number two one month relative performance leaders uh, not necessarily because of this <laughs> this recent pullback but because of the fact that they launched higher on that crop report now the thing to remember is both oats and wheat had a slight uptrend before the crop report unlike soybeans and unlike corn so I'm more interested in buying pullbacks. I would prefer that these are entries that we take next week. Fridays for me are follow through Fridays. Unless it's a non-farm payroll Friday, I would prefer follow through Fridays to fill Fridays, meaning I would prefer to get follow through the new entries on a day like today. And, and really anytime I'm going into the weekend, there's a certain risk inherent to now having to let go of the steering wheel, if you will, and be subject to whatever can happen between now and the Sunday open and the Monday open. So as a Forex trader, I'm thinking, all right, Friday to Sunday. As a futures trader, it's a little bit of Friday to Sunday, but obviously Friday to Monday. So now let us take a peek at some of the, the laggards. You know, what's at the bottom of the list? What are those weakness stories that I might you know, view with a expectation of uh, wanting to sell them, have a bearish bias, wanting to bounce, uh, wanting to play bounces into resistance, things of that nature. So orange juice is definitely one of them. But notice I don't have the clarity on the daily to actually, hang on here, to actually take advantage of any kind of downtrend. It will be more about oversold levels against resistance. So I love the fact that it's weak, but it's not organized into a downtrend. Cocoa is very similar. We've kept our eye on cocoa. It's more about chop here. In fact, some of our simpler futures folks are actually long cocoa off the oversold floor. So even though that we have this overall downtrend, the psychology that was, that transitioned into chop, the thing that we have is actually a number of traders taking the aggressive long position. Now I say aggressive because I'd rather take a short and that's what I'll be watching with the psychology still very much bearish. Another one that is setting up as a short will be gold. I'm not quite there yet, but I am interested in the 12.35 to 12.40 area and building a short position within the context of this very fresh downtrend. What about currencies? The Canadian dollar continues to be the strongest currency. This is the central bank that just hiked rates this week. It's the central bank that's probably the newest in terms of policy normalization and, and that switch from dovishness to hawkishness. And so Canadian dollar continues to basically just outperform everything. You know, being able to outpace the euro right now, which is one of the stronger overall stories we've got, being able to outpace, say, the New Zealand dollar, which has been one of the stronger. Notice how everything is weaker against the loonie, against the Canadian dollar. So definitely a, an individual currency story that I would like to buy. We have a lot, of, a lot of latitude as to where to buy it, but I'll continue to focus mainly on buying the Canadian dollar against the US dollar and buying the Canadian dollar against the Japanese yen. 
So you can see those setups right here. What else are setups I've got my eye on? Aussie US, New Zealand dollar US, uh, most certainly Euro US. Now this is one that hasn't accelerated away from us as much as some of the others have, but I'm going to definitely be keeping an eye on this going forward. So that is the recap after a pretty long week. Uh, I say long because it was a lot of wait and see and that perpetual, what feels like perpetual <laughs> patience required to wait. That's exhausting to me. I don't, I do not find volatility exhausting for a number of reasons. And, you know, possibly be, because, you know, we use a combination of just the ultimate cheat, which is uh, the auto chartist volatility analysis combined with the economic calendar that lets us number one know the most likely volatility explosions if you will and it also uh, lets us quantify those so i i don't get exhausted necessarily by volatility but waiting for those entries waiting for the volatility to kick in so i can get my catch the wick entries on those orders that I've parked, that for whatever reason exhausts me. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to next week. And this is what will be front and center on my futures and my Forex radar. I'll catch you the next update.